Hey YouTubers, Muskrat Jim here. We got some freezing rain last night and now it's all melting off the trees. I've been feeling a little under the weather lately, fighting a cold this week, and so I'm going out right now to pick up some birch polypore. It's a medicinal fungus that grows on a lot of birch trees, um, and I'm going to stew it up and make some tea out of it. So come along. And I'll show you it. Rabbit Prince. Well, there it is, the birch polypore bracket fungus. The birch polypore grows only on birch trees, so basically everywhere in the northern hemisphere, except in the northern tundra, of course, where there are no trees. This fungus was used in ancient times for tinder and medicinal purposes. Field guides list this as an edible fungus, but it just means that it's not poisonous. Modern chemical analysis has shown that the birch polypore has anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, anti-tumor, and antiviral properties. So what I'm going to do is knock one of those down and take a closer look. Okay, so here we go. There's the underside, and it's called polypore because the underside of this fungus is full of pores that the, the fungal spores fall out of. The spores are, um, are microscopic, but you can see the, uh, the pores themselves. Now the top is hard and leathery. Well, there's lots of ice on it right now. But anyway, the top is hard and leathery. And what it's been used for in the past is um, as a razor strop. So it's, it's tough like leather and you can uh, sharpen your razor on it. Like once, once you sharpen your blade, you can strop it on a piece of leather or a piece of, of this fungus to give it a, a nice edge. Now it's a bracket fungus because it grows from one point on the trunk and spreads out sort of like in a, a bracket. So I'm going to take that home and uh, try to brew some tea out of it. Now the, the younger ones, they're quite tiny, but the size of your thumb, they're a lot more tender than this older one and apparently it's edible but anyway I, I heard it's quite bitter I haven't tried it myself I'm go just gonna take a look at the tree to see if I can see any tiny ones There's a tiny one right there, but I kind of damaged it trying to take it off. I should have just used a knife and cut it off, but as you can see, as you can see, it's kind of soft, soft and rubbery or spongy. Actually, I'm going to try to take that off anyway. There. See it quite spongy? So apparently 
these tiny ones are edible only because they're uh, they're softer now I've heard they're bitter so I don't know but I'll I'm gonna give it a try anyway what the hell I'm getting a lot of rain on my camera lens it's really tough to chew but it doesn't really have a bitter taste I have to chew it a bit and then swallow it. It's almost like swallowing bubble gum or something. Yeah, I guess it does have a bit of a bitter aftertaste. Yeah, after you eat quite a bit of it, you're starting to get the bitter flavor. Oh well. Who said medicine had to taste good? Feels like leather when I'm cutting through it. in the pot. Put a few more in there. Add some water. Put it on the stove. Now we'll boil that up and we'll drink the tea. It has a pleasant sort of a woody mushroomy smell. I'm gonna let that boil for a while. I don't think that the tea is gonna be nearly as dark as um, the tea of other fungi like chaga. I'm hoping that the tea is more pleasant than the bitter taste of that young piece that I ate. As you can see the water is starting to turn a little bit, a little bit darker. But I'll let it boil some more. So there we are, a nice golden tea. Pretty hot. Well, it does have um, a sort of bitter taste, similar to the little piece that I munched in the woods there. But it's not too bad.
it's not as good as chaga tea. Um, but I'm hoping that the antiviral and antibacterial nature of this tea will um, help my cold. So anyway, this is Muskrat Jim, signing out. For more information on fungi and other plants, visit thehikersnotebook.net.